Mmm, sweet child of mine. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always I'm reading with a vengeance and I hope you are too. Much appreciation to all you OGs who keep coming back and if you're new to my channel, very warm welcome to you. I hope everybody is doing very well. How's everybody's reading going? Mine's going pretty good. It's been a mood reading month for me, so uh, the entire month of May has just been books that I want to read when I want to read them, which it should be like that all the time. But as you know, sometimes, especially as a booktuber, we do challenges, we do readathons, we do buddy reads, we judge prizes, we follow prizes, so it doesn't always end up that way. But I've been enjoying my mood reading May and it's been great. But as much as I do enjoy it, I do like to do these TBR videos to play this kind of random game. Is it a game? It's not really a game. It's just a thing where I choose five books that are pushed up the list a little bit higher on my TBR for the following month. How I choose those books is I use dice, I use a random number generator, and it's just fun. And it just kind of keeps me honest because it mostly grabs books from my physical TBR and my TBR list on Goodreads. And it just reminds me of the books that I've already selected for myself that I want to read that kind of get lost in the <laughs> huge, huge lists that we have for ourselves of books that we want to read. So that's the whole purpose of these TBR videos. But before we get to that, I did want to talk about some books that have come into my possession recently for one reason or another. I mean, I know I've talked about this one. No Two Persons is an ARC that I got my hands on. I think it's already out at this point, but I have access to ARCs at my new job as a bookseller at an independent bookstore. And that's how I came to get this one. This is another arc. This one comes out in June also, but I'm really kind of hoping to read it before it actually comes out. This is Lay Your Body Down by Amy Souter Clark. I have not read this author before. She wrote a book called Girl 11. It says it's a novel of suspense. A young woman returns to her rural Minnesota hometown where a radical evangelical pastor has poisoned everyone's mind and may be covering up a murder. So that one seems intriguing to me. And then you look what came in the mail, finally, Black Butterflies. This is the final book on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list and short list that I have yet to read. So I definitely want to get this read before the winner is announced in June and before my trip to London to the live show. And the other thing that I wanted to address before I get on with my TBR game is I never really made any kind of announcement or did anything about when I reached a thousand subscribers. And I want you to know it's not because I'm not grateful. I am so grateful, super surprised and completely humbled that I reached a thousand subscribers. I never would have thought I don't do this to get a thousand subscribers. Just the idea that there's a thousand of you who want to hear what I have to say. It's just super, I don't know the right word for it, but you get the idea. I'm just happy that something that I so enjoy doing brings joy to so many of you as well, but I never like posted a video or did any kind of event or special video acknowledging the fact that I got a thousand subscribers. And so I want to do that here with a giveaway. Now, a lot of people do giveaways, I believe with Amazon wish lists, and that might, might be something that you guys are more excited about and might be something that you would want as a giveaway. But I'm going to try my hand at this and see if it's something that you guys would be excited about. Because again, the giveaway is to show my gratitude to all of you. So we'll see if this is a gift that you guys are even interested in. First, I'll talk about what I'm giving away and then I'll talk about how to enter the giveaway. It's not that difficult. The first thing I'm gonna give away is this tote bag. And this is a canvas tote bag. You'll see it's pretty good size. It's pretty deep. Well, I'll put the measurements, I guess, up here on the screen. And I think I'll put the details down below in the doodly-doo as well. But what makes this different, this tote bag different, is this embroidered graphic on it, I guess you would call it. And I actually hand embroidered this graphic of a woman sitting in a cozy chair reading a book. I will pop up some pictures, I guess some more detailed pictures maybe here to get a closer look at the work. Uh, I'm an amateur embroidery person, so 
I mean, I think I did a pretty good job on it and I think it's super, super cute. Just keep in mind it is handmade. And while I love this picture so much, I mean, when I saw the pattern, I knew I had to do it and I knew I had to put it on something. I'm not a typical tote bag carrying person, so I never use it. It just basically kind of sits around as decor and I think it should be used. That's going to be something I'm giving away. And also I'm going to be giving away as a separate gift. I'm giving two things away is this edition of Lee Bardugo's Hellbent. Now, I got this book at work because we have this box of books when books are damaged to the point we can't sell them, uh, we can take them home if we want. And this is a brand new copy and the damage they're talking about people, I'll show it to you, is just a little bit of crinkling, just a slight tear there. That's the only damage to this beautiful edition. Although I know the cover's disturbing, it's disturbing to me too, but there's a little bit of beauty in the artwork that I can't quite put my finger on. What I think the real beauty is, is the inside covers. Just gorgeous. We have that and there's the back. It's kind of a continuation of the picture. Other than that, the pages are perfectly intact. If you don't know, this is the follow-up to Ninth House, which I read, but it's young adult, dark academia. I mean, I thought it was okay, but it wasn't my favorite. Oh, there's a little bit. Oh, I think that's where there's a little bit of damage here. And I think that's, I think that was caused by the bookshop cats that we have. Sometimes they have a little nibble. So just full disclosure, there is some damage to the corner of not only the cover, but a little bit of the actual book itself. But the pages are all there and intact. And if you're not picky about your editions, I think this would be a good addition to anybody's library. So if you're interested in that, that's the second giveaway. Now, how to enter the giveaway. You have to be a subscriber, obviously. Please comment down below first which prize you are interested in, tote bag or book. And then second, tell me something about you that made you gravitate to this channel. What is the thing that would make you and I friends? I would love to hear something like that. So if you're interested in either one of these prizes, I wish you the very best of luck. And I will probably announce the winners probably in about a month. I'll probably close the comment section after, I don't know, two weeks. I would say that seems fair. Oh, and also you need to be in the United States. I'm very sorry about that. This postage is ridiculous. And then you also need to be willing to give me your postal address so that I can send you your prize if you win. Okay, so on with the TBR game. So basically what I do is I use a random number generator to pick two books off my physical shelf. And then I roll dice to select which categories I'm going to get the next three books. We'll only be picking five. So super exciting. Let's get started. Okay, let's go to the random number generator here. And we started off with number two because I started my list off in the number two. And we have a total of 52 books on my physical shelf right now. Go and we get the number 38. All right, the 38th book on my little list is... Wouldn't you love to love her? Okay, wouldn't you love to love her? I think that's over here, yes. Wouldn't you love to love her by Shannon Jump. I got this book from a Instagram friend. Her name is Kelly. If you are on Instagram and you want a fun bookish account to follow, I'll pop up her handle here on the screen. It's Dear Books I Love You. Her name is Kelly. She's super funny and she posts every day uh, books that she's read, books that she wants to read. And I think she got this. Let's see. I think I still have the note. Congrats, Heather, on snagging Shannon Jump's new book from my Support Indie Authors giveaway. I hope you enjoy. She does a number of giveaways. She does birthday giveaways. And yeah, I guess this was an indie author giveaway that I entered and I won. This is a psychological thriller, but I think it's also like a spicy romance that I typically wouldn't gravitate towards. Let's see what the back says. Life has never been easy for the strikingly beautiful Alicia Thompson. As an admitted sex addict and adult webcam performer, 
Hello. Alicia's highly troubled past, a childhood riddled with abandonment and neglect that's left her nearly void of emotions, comes back to haunt her. When her husband, Dylan, ends up dead, she's found wide-eyed in the corner of the room, the murder weapon tightly gripped in her hand and covered in blood. The evidence against her is compelling. Now incarcerated, she awaits trial for the brutal murder. Everyone, including her high stakes attorney, seems to doubt her innocence. The Minnesota case takes the media by storm and as a lifelong loner, Alicia knows she has no one to turn to. Her life suspended, she spends the long days in prison keeping the other inmates at arm's length desperate to evade a life sentence. But prison brings its own challenges. And when an unexpected face from her past shows up in the courtroom, will Alicia be out for justice or revenge? Okay, we'll see how this goes. Kelly, if you're watching, thank you for having those wonderful giveaways. I'm super happy that I entered and won. And I'll finally be getting to this, hopefully, allegedly, theoretically, <laughs> we'll see. All right, what's next? Let's go back to our random number generator here. All right, let's hit this guy again. And the number we get is 24. Go back to our list. Number 24 is The Child Finder. Okay. See, this is what I mean. I've had this book in my TBR for a number of years. My husband read it. He liked it. He thought I would like it. And so I've held on to it. And that is right here. The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld. I love this cover, it's gorgeous. I think this is also another thriller. Oh, it looks like the author is a journalist and a licensed investigator spe specializing in death penalty work. That's intriguing, I did not know that. Three years ago, Madison Culver disappeared while her family was choosing a Christmas tree in Oregon's Skookum National Forest. She would be eight years old now if she has survived. Desperate to find their beloved daughter, the Culvers turn to Naomi, a private investigator with an uncanny talent for locating the lost and missing. Known to the police and a select group of parents as the child finder, Naomi is the Culvers' last hope. Naomi's methodical search takes her deep into the icy, mysterious forest in the Pacific Northwest and into her own fragmented past. She understands children like Madison because once upon a time, she too was a lost girl. As Naomi relentlessly pursues and slowly uncovers the truth behind Madison's disappearance, shards of a dark dream pierce the defenses that have protected her, reminding her of a terrible loss she feels but cannot remember. If she finds Madison, will Naomi ultimately unlock the secrets of her own life? Hmm. Told in the alternating voices of Naomi and a deeply imaginative child. Looks like that's what's up next, The Child Finder. When you don't think of books that you've had for so long, it's like Christmas or your birthday. Even though I am kind of assigning this book to me, it's like going to be a mood read, I feel. Okay, next we're going to roll some dice to figure out which category that I will be picking the next three books from. I used to do it where I would roll the dice to figure out how many categories out of the next three books would come from, but I've decided that I'm gonna take that part out of it and I'm just going to do three different categories because it's just more fun that way. I have a total of 10 categories, I believe. Nope, actually I have 11 categories and they range from subscriber recommendations to lowest rated books on my Goodreads TBR, highest rated and so on. So let's see what's first. All right, rolling the dice. And the first one is a six. I feel like I roll sixes a lot. What is category six? And that is the most recently added to my TBR. So we're gonna go to my Goodreads list, date added, and the most recent. Most recent is, oh, the absolutist, but you know what, that, that's not gonna count because I have actually had that on my TBR for a while. It's been on my physical shelf for a while and I just realized in a random scroll that I just hadn't put it on my, t my Goodreads TBR. So that doesn't count. Let's see what the next one is. And that is Quinn by M. Strang. This is a book that I found while working at the bookstore. We are constantly shelving books and constantly arranging and organizing, and I'm finding books all of the time. And this one seemed intriguing to me. This one just came out in March. This is marketed as just straight fiction. It's only 208 pages long, so that's promising. It's not very highly rated on Goodreads at 3.35. 
but there's only 34 ratings. So not a whole lot of people have read this book. You'll see why it kind of jumped out at me and I got interested in it. Quinn is serving a life sentence for a crime he's convinced he hasn't committed. Surely the authorities have got it wrong and when they find his childhood sweetheart, Andrea, his name will be cleared. His parole is drawing near when he receives an unexpected letter from Andrea's mother who invites Quinn to share her home. It soon becomes apparent that what appears to be a genuine act of forgiveness is influenced by more complex motivations as they navigate the thorny terrain of guilt, justice, and mutual need that underpins their relationship. The story of Quinn's past is gradually revealed, setting in motion a final reckoning. This is a debut novel, so that's exciting. Have you guys heard of this book? Have you heard of this author? It's completely new all the way around to me. And that's what's exciting about working in a bookstore. I just come across books that I just don't think I would normally pick up. But in doing my everyday work, I have my hands on literally hundreds and hundreds of books every day. So anyways, we'll see how that one goes. Okay, let's roll for the next category. Again, another six. I roll sixes all the time. Let's try again. Four. All right, what is category four, and that is, oh, classics. Classics that I wanna read. <sighs> that seems like an oxymoron. If you've watched my videos before, I don't have really good luck with classics, but I have a few on here that I think aren't as daunting as your average classic. For example, I have on here, Rebecca. That's a favorite of many. I have The Picture of Dorian Gray. I have Wide Sargasso Sea, although I'm not sure of the writing style, but I think it's short, so that's a good thing. I have I Capture the Castle on here, which I've heard a lot of other booktubers love. And I also have Peter Pan, which I'm intrigued by. So out of those, what would you guys recommend? For the sake of this video, I think I'm going to either go with Wide Sargasso Sea or Peter Pan, depending on which one I can get my hands on the easiest. But what do you guys recommend? And I might be swayed by your recommendations. So put down below, Rebecca, Dorian Gray, Capture the Castle, Sargasso Sea, or Peter Pan. What do you guys think? I haven't given up completely on classics, I'm still reluctant. I'm still hesitant. It still <laughs> freaks me out, but I still have hope that there's one out there that I'm absolutely going to love. So help me out here. All right. Last roll for the last category. Here we go. Ooh, number 11. I don't think I've picked 11 before. I think this is going to be the first time for these videos. Ooh, five star one book authors. Okay. So what that means is an author who I've only read one book from, but I gave it five stars. The list is pretty significant, I think. So the one caveat that I'm gonna add to this one is there needs to be another book by that author that I actually have selected a book I want to read. This will be make it clear. Here are some examples of some authors that I've only read one book from but gave it a five star. Let me put my clothes back on here. Pat Conroy, I read Prince of Tides, gave it five stars. I think that's gonna be a given for this, but I want to read Beach Music. And Beach Music was also another book that has been recommended by a couple of viewers, I believe, Michelle Neal and Linda Dashner. So that might sway me a little bit more for that one. Another author, Steve Toltz, which I read a fraction of the whole. I have his quicksand on my TBR. Another one is Elizabeth Gilbert. I gave Eat, Pray, Love five stars. I know, I know, so basic. And I have City of Girls on my TBR. Also have Robert McGammon, who Boy's Life is one of my all-time favorite books. I have Swan Song on my TBR. And as a matter of fact, Swan Song has come up on my TBR game before, and I just never got to it. It's a huge book. I really, really want to read it, but for whatever reason, I just have not been able to get to it. David Arnold wrote Mosquito Land, and I absolutely love that book. He has his most recent one that I added to my TBR, The Electric Kingdom. Christy Lefteri wrote one of my all-time favorite books, The Beekeeper of Aleppo, and I would love to read her songbirds. And then finally, Alif Shafak, who wrote The Island of Missing Trees, and I have her 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world on my TBR. This TBR game is not going quite as well as it has in the past <laughs> because I'm coming up with all these books. 
Again, I ask you guys, what do you guys think out of those books that I just mentioned? Maybe I'll pop up their covers right here and you can kind of look and pick something that you recommend from some of these authors that I love and comment down below. I love the engagement that I have with you guys. So I think that would make it fun to pick, even though I think you guys watch these videos to watch me pick. <laughs> Is that a cop out? I don't know. I'm sorry. It's hard to pick. They have all been on my TBR for so long, specifically after I read each of those phenomenal books. I need help. What can I say? Okay, so that was my failure of a TBR game. Some other books that I have to read in June that have kind of been pre-selected. If I don't get to Black Butterflies in May, I definitely have to read it in June before June 14th. I also have my physical book club book that I'll be reading, and that's The People We Keep by Allison Larkin. I've been meaning to read that for a really long time. I'm super glad that that book is picked for June. So that's it. Those are the books that are on my list of June hopefuls to read. Have you read any of these books that I've talked about today? I would love to hear your thoughts. What books do you have planned to read in June? And again, if you have some recommendations out of the books that I mentioned, please, please, please help a sister out. Or you could just say hi down in the doodly do. If you're still watching at this point, please consider giving that like button a boop and a subscribe would be wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.